this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at the Lenovo Idea Tab Links. This is Lenovo's 11.6 inch Windows 8 Intel Atom Power tablet. Different from the ThinkPad Tablet 2, obviously, well, it's a different size for starters, and also, unlike the ThinkPad Tablet 2, it has an optional keyboard dock. Right here, as you can see, they snap together, turns it into a convertible laptop. We're going to look at it now. So, this is the Lenovo Idea Tab Links. This is a Windows 8 tablet. 32-bit Windows because it runs on the usual Intel Atom CloverTrail CPU. That's the Z2760 at 1.8 gigahertz, 2 gigs of DDR2 RAM, and a 64 gig flash storage module. Just like all the other Intel Atom tablets. So we're not going to go into great detail about those specifications because, well, it's the same as all the others on the market. There's pretty much no variation right now. You only get DDR2 RAM with Atom tablets. It's not Lenovo's fault. That's an architectural uh, way it is basically with Atom tablets right now and the 64 gigs is eMMC style storage it's not an mSATA style SSD drive so 11.6 inch IPS display very nice display bright 400 nits of brightness responsive to touch it supports five points of capacitive multi-touch we have a physical home button down here that's nice so you don't accidentally brush it like you would a capacitive button just handling it and accidentally send yourself home and it's thin tablet so you can see how slim it is, and right here, this is our speaker port, volume controls, this is rotation lock if you don't want the screen to rotate, two-tone finish, you got the black on the front and then the silver on the side, dark silver. Up top here, we have our power button with a little power on charging indicator, door over here, pop that open, we have our micro SD card slot, no SIM card slot, it might look like it, but... This does not have a SIM card slot in it. Now, overseas, you may be able to get it with 3G, but our particular model does not have that. On this side over here, headphone jack, micro HDMI, our other speaker port. Down at the bottom, we have our micro USB. This is used for both charging and for USB host, and Lenovo includes a shorty adapter cable that adapts this to a full-size female USB 2.0 port. Again, Adam addresses USB 2.0 only. And these are the locating holes for when you stick in the keyboard dock. Now, if we take a look at the back, you're going to say, aha, the same people who designed the Lenovo S2110 Android tablet designed this. It really, it, there's a whole lot of similarities. The keyboard dock is similar to this same finish over here. Textured plastic, pretty grippy, not a beautiful looking piece. Uh, all in all, it's not something you look at and say, ooh, and ah, it's just gorgeous. I have to have that. But functional, thin, light, 1.4 pounds, that it is. Now, this guy sells for between $549 and $599, depending on where you look and where you buy it from. And the keyboard dock, sold separately, runs from $129 when it's on sale at places like Staples, who have just been having some crazy sales lately, as high as $199 at Lenovo's own website. It's funny, they always have good discounts and specials on the products themselves, but they're listing the, the dock for $199. More often in stores, you'll see it for an average of $150. So, Total put that together, that runs you anywhere up to $750 for the two together. If you manage to get the best price, probably right now, again, it's at Staples, $529 plus $129, and you're looking at under $700. So ballparkish with other name brand Atom tablets, not a super bargain. Not even particularly all cheap compared to the Lenovo ThinkPad Tablet 2. The ThinkPad Tablet 2, usually, well, ThinkPad is their business line, is a little bit more expensive, but in this case, they're mostly just different. And we'll talk about that in a bit, we'll compare them. But next, let's look at the keyboard dock. Nice, roomy, relatively large. Again, the design reminds us right up to this interesting little thing right up here. See, it actually holds it inside of about an inch and a half tall piece of plastic. This is translucent. Interesting design, right? There's like a slot that it sits in here. Uh, but that again is a lot like the Lenovo S2110 Android tablet dock design. We have our release button right here. Very nice, firm, easy release right up there with the HP NVX2, which has a great lock in and release design. This whole thing right here is a little bit weird, but Lenovo likes this. We're going to see this again on the Helix. The fact that it's kind of a gray translucent plastic certainly is interesting depending on how you hold it if there's light behind it it actually looks clear and it looks like the tablet's floating in this you can see we've got a nice large keyboard here good key spacing Lenovo smile keys the curve at the bottom pretty nice to, neat, nice to type on not up there with the best Lenovo ThinkPad keyboards though it's decent there's not a lot of key travel there's a little bit of play here not, not too much it's decent though, and it's sunk down a little bit, so that gives you the feeling a little bit like a laptop. 
And here we have the teeny trackpad. Not my favorite part of this dock right here. It's not just that it's small, but it's a little hypersensitive. Maybe the drivers will improve that in the future, but sometimes I've noticed I've accidentally picked up folders and tossed them where I didn't want them to be, that kind of thing. So not a huge selling point. What is a selling point is the two USB 2.0 ports on the side right here. Makes it computer-like. And here we have the micro USB port again for the charging. It's a standard 2 amp 5 volt charger that you see with a lot of mobile OS tablets including the iPad. Why does this have a charging port? Because this also has a battery inside. That is always an awesome feature. The Atom tablet itself has about eight hours of claim battery life, and we're seeing like seven and a half, so they're not off on that. This doubles your runtime. So again, you're looking at something that could probably run you 14, 15 hours when you use it together with the dock. That's a good selling point. And the back, we have rubber feet to stop it from skidding around right here. It does rest on this edge a little bit when you have it tilted back. Simple looking, basic looking, but slim, not too heavy. Fairly well balanced, it's about the same weight as the tablet itself, so you're talking about three pounds total weight putting them together. Drops in like so. You hear it lock in firmly. And the profile that it cuts is interesting looking. This is kind of an interruption visually, but it is slim. And it looks pretty much like, well, a small notebook computer, doesn't it? And that's what it does when it's in the dock. And for those of you who like to kick things back a little further, this is as far back as you can push it, but that is pretty far, so that is not bad at all. Since this is an IPS display, viewing angles are quite good, so it's really not like you have to do a whole lot of angling just to make the display viewable. This is a 1366 by 768, 11.6 inch display. That's pretty much what you're going to find on, on all these Atom tablets. Uh, the size varies from anywhere from 10.1 at the smallest to 10.6 or 11.6, but resolution on the Atom tablets isn't higher, probably so that it doesn't stress the CPU and the pretty mediocre uh, Imagination Technologies Power VR GPU that's inside this, the graphics processor. Speed is just fine, as always with Atom tablets on all these Metro Live Tile apps right here. Even the games runs just great. Well, if you want to get to the Windows desktop, tap our desktop tile, voila, there it is. So yes, this can also run Windows 7 applications. That's the appeal of the, the Windows 7 Atom tablets, like the idea of tab links. You can run your Windows 7 apps, yet you can have really amazing battery life and a light design. And this is, again, a fanless design, and it runs cool. That's, that's what Atom's all about. Uh, the drawback is, well, you know, it's not going to run everything very quickly, and with only 2 gigs of RAM, you're not going to do that much multitasking. If you're running Photoshop, you don't want to have too many other apps running in the background. You can run Photoshop. Um, the EMC storage isn't super fast for application launches. It's going to take longer, but it's pretty tolerable to use once you do. And we have things like Office installed on here. And you notice we have a little Chrome icon. There is our Chrome web browser. telling us welcome to Chrome and we can sign in here. So you can put Firefox on here, you can put Chrome extensions on here, you can put iTunes on here if you want to and actually plug in your iPhone or your iPad or whatever it is because this guy's the boss. This is the Windows PC right here, just though it may be small and light. In terms of speed, actually this is one of the quicker Atom tablets. Now they all benchmark within a pretty narrow range. With PC Mark 7 you're looking at anywhere from 1200 to 1400 and something. Well this is one of the 1400 and somethings. This guy does 1435 on PC Mark 7, which is right up there with the HP NVX2 and Lenovo's own ThinkPad tablet too for being some of the quicker ones. Now, are you going to feel a hundred points difference on, on that benchmark test? No, you're not. But some of these experientially feel a lot faster and smoother than others. And this guy is one of the fast and smooth ones. All operations are responsive on this. Again, if you, if you bog it down with too many Windows 7 programs running at once, it will be slower. But it's very stable. It's responsive as long as you respect its limitations, which is to say you can run Office on this just fine. You can do your Word. In fact, you can see we've got all of our Office applications installed on here. Just don't run too many of them at once. You can run Outlook on here, for example. Does all that stuff. Doesn't come with Office, by the way. Only RT bundles Office. You're going to have to supply your own copy of Office. But there it is, and it works just fine. And now for comparison, here we have it next to the HP NVX2, another 11.6 inch Intel Atom Transformer Windows 8 tablet. Slide this little latch right here and this guy detaches from the base. You can see it cuts a slightly smaller footprint even though they're both 11.6 inch devices. They both have large keyboards. This has a much bigger trackpad though, the NVX2.
a sensitive one. Just launched something there. I prefer this keyboard. It's a little bit more responsive in terms of key travel and key damping is nice on it as well. This guy is all metal and by the way this is sold only as a package deal. You can't just buy the tablet so this is really for you folks who find use for the keyboard as well. But it's a real nice package. All metal, classy looking and this guy sells for on average of about $6.99 right now. Sometimes you see specials for $5.99. When it came out, list price was $8.49. That was way too high. Mm. But happily, prices drop quickly. And this is how they both look closed and together. And here we have it next to its buddy, the ThinkPad Tablet 2. 10.1 inch tablet, this one here. The smallest tablet on the block for Windows tablets. In fact, it's pretty small compared to anything on the market, even right there with the iPad for size. It's very portable. ThinkPad Tablet 2 has that kind of raven black soft touch finish. Even lighter, 1.3 pounds, but it's smaller, so hey. This guy has a USB port too, the, the same the same deal. But you know what? It's a funny thing. ThinkPad Tablet 2, one of the big drawbacks is it doesn't have enough power to power flat, uh, external hard drives, things like that. It's those portable 2.5 inch hard drives I'm talking about that usually run off USB power can't do that. This guy can do it, so one good point for the idea to have links. Now, though they both have IPS displays, I'd say that the ThinkPad Tablet 2 has a more vibrant and colorful display. In terms of brightness, the, the Lynx holds its own against the ThinkPad Tablet 2, but this guy is much more color-saturated display. And when it comes to performance, you can see they're pretty well similar, because we all have the same internals, and actually the Idea Tab Lynx has slightly higher scores in, in some places. We're looking at a score for processor of 3.5 on a scale of 1 to 9.9. .9. Memory scores of 5.5. 3.8 for graphics, desktop graphics. Gaming graphics at 3.3. Primary hard disk, 5.6. So pretty close on the scores, occasionally a little point one point preference here for the idea of tab links. But mostly it's about which design you want, what size you want, and if you want that keyboard design that turns into a clamshell PC with the ThinkPad Tablet 2, there's only a Bluetooth keyboard that it stands in, so it's not really the same solid kind of design. But the ThinkPad Tablet 2 has this Wacom pen, which in the US comes on most configurations and that's a nice option to have digital pen much more precise for those of you who want to write and take notes there is no active digitizer on the idea tab links you can use a capacitive stylus but that's kind of like trying to write with your finger it's really much less precise and forget about trying to draw with a capacitive stylus decently here we have a western digital portable hard drive two and a half inch and this is a USB 3.0 hard drive but of course it's backwards compatible with 2.0 which the idea tab links has and this is a little adapter that comes in the box, so you can turn that little micro USB port on the bottom to a full-size USB port, like so. And that's what we're using. Now, not the most convenient location, because you've got to deal with the cable sticking out the bottom, and you cannot charge at the same time if you're going to use this. But, indeed, it does work. It powers up the hard drive just fine. Just played a little sound to let us know it sees the hard drive, and it's just opened up our hard drive. That's the contents right there on screen. Yes, indeed, it does work. So, good times. Of course, if you do get the keyboard dock, there are two full-size ports on that, and you don't have to worry about using the little adapter cable, uh, finding a way to set this on the table with the pigtail sticking out and not being able to charge at the same time. And flash drives work, the usual everything. You know, Windows 7 will work with this. USB 3G, 4G, LTE dongles, keyboards, game controllers, you name it. Uh, that said, gaming with an Intel Atom tablet, you don't really want to go there with Windows 7 games. That is, you're not going to install Call of Duty on here or maybe the original Diablo. That's about it. No Diablo 3. But it can play the Windows 8 Metro Live Tile games just fine. I'll show you that in a minute. But before we hit up gaming, we're going to play a 1080p movie trailer so you can see how it performs. 1080p obviously exceeds the resolution of this display panel, but we do have micro HDMI out, so you just might want to do that. And we'll use the Metro Video Player. You can also use Windows Media Player, of course. Since you have a full Windows experience here. Speaker volume is at 70%. Not frightfully loud, but it, you know, most tablets are not 11.6 inch. It is stereo, at least. It's reasonable separation. And it plays just fine. And now we're going to test out Riptide GP. Pretty popular on mobile platforms. Oh, 
So it's dropping frame rate just for a moment at the beginning, but now it's doing fine. This uses touch control. There is no option to use the accelerometer. Oh, we are getting used to that, but plays just fine. Look at that. We got the water splashing. We do get some nice enhancements, even though this obviously isn't a Tegra CPU or a Tegra Zone game at this point. So it plays very good, really nice and smooth. So while you can't play Windows 7 games most of the time, it does just great with these games from the Windows Store. The tablet has about 34 gigs of storage free out of that 64. That's because the operating system, the recovery partition, pre-installed applications take up some space. Not too much bloatware on here. We have uh, Norton Security Software. And, yeah, yeah, I would probably just go with Windows Security Essentials, honestly, which is free on this. Skype is preloaded. That's fine. I think most people enjoy that. Evernote Touch is on here. AccuWeather, shortcut to eBay, Kindle. Look up on your dictionary. We've installed Office on here as a shortcut to do that. And Fresh Paint comes installed on it. This has Broadcom Wi-Fi. This is single band, 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. I, Lenovo, they really need to start doing dual band Wi-Fi on their idea pad and idea tab products. They used to use that as a set it apart from the ThinkPad line, but now everybody has dual band Wi-Fi. And it's really nice, particularly when you're using Bluetooth, because Bluetooth also runs on 2.4 gigahertz. You get interference. It'd be nice to be able to jump on that 5 gigahertz band. But single band Wi-Fi, that said, reception has been just fine for us and speeds are quite tolerable. As Bluetooth 4.0 does not have NFC and it has a front-facing camera for video chat. So that's the Lenovo Idea Tab Links. It's available now with or without the dock, depending on your preference. I like the idea of the dock though because it doubles battery runtime. Certainly a nice Windows 8 tablet and a good complement to the ThinkPad tablet too. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for the full review and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.